There's a tug of war when it comes to some cultural influences within the city. Nice only became officially French in 1860, and the prominence of the Italian flair still clearly exists today. I see it in the buildings, the styles of things around me, the people, the music. The city is laid in so many ways, where old meets new, new meets old, and both seem to coexist and exist independently. The colours of the city is perhaps one of my favourite things, no matter the season. The warm oranges of the buildings, the bright blues of the ocean against the grey pebbles. That is so typically what Nice has to offer as a version of sea sand. The vibrance of the fruit and vegetables at the Courcelet market serves as an inspiration for the plates I put on the table, not only at home, but also in a little restaurant on Rulas Gavis. But what I love most is the simplicity of Nice. You wouldn't think that the second largest city in the south of France would be simple, would you? It has an atmosphere of feeling small and approachable, as though every alleyway will lead you to something inviting, something new, which it does. We infrequently look up. Often our eyes are drawn to the ground or eye level. Nice is a city that makes me want to look up. It helps me see and understand the world in a different way. You never know what you might see. A person singing out of their window or a silk dress hanging on the 12th story of a building. About a decade ago, I was working on a yacht in Monaco, and it was one of my off days, which I always cherished. I went on a trip to Nice and walked around the city, and I passed a motorcycle repair shop on a small street called Rue Las Cavies. The shop has gone out of business, which caught my eye, and a big sign saying, Restaurant Possible. It was quaint, small, but I immediately knew what I wanted out of it. These streets led me to my future, and for that, I will always be grateful. Having lived here for a while, I've learned that Nice is a city of people. It's a loud and textured city with a lot of personal experiences. But the fascinating people I've met is why I've had these experiences over and over. And they helped me to open up a world of new places and outlooks. Having a restaurant in Nice also means that people find you. And whether they are here to stay or are simply passing through, they each have something new to share. Maybe about the city or something you never knew was there before. The behind the scenes is not glamorous at all. And it takes a certain level of grit and belief in the magic of the bigger picture to carry through the perhaps repetitive 
and mundane parts. No one dreams of cleaning wax off candlesticks and ironing tablecloths, but these are exactly the things that make a world of a difference. Every tool in a restaurant goes together to make the meal what it is. Our maitre d' understands the importance of the tiniest of details. Every detail enhances the experience of the guests. But we are creating experiences for people, not robots. With this, we have the honor of guiding their experiences, without them even knowing it. With details such as music, the way we fold our napkins, and how each wine we serve elevates a key flavor in its partner dish. Restaurant. When the word appeared in the 16th century, it referred to the food that restores. From restaurant to restore. And was used more specifically for a rich, highly flavored soup, thought capable of restoring lost strength. It was in 1765 that a Monsieur Boulanger of Paris opened up a shop selling soup with a sign allegedly proclaiming Boulanger débite des restaurants de vin. Boulanger sells restorative fit for the gods. What I'm getting at from this tale is that I want that for restaurant young, the same, where people come to be restored in some way or another. A place where they can not only feel healthier, but happy in all their own senses. I never understood what people meant when they say it takes a village more than I do now at Young. Despite my team being small, nothing goes unnoticed. But to achieve this, it takes many different kinds of people, experts. It takes a certain level of getting it right before you can put your name on the door.
sit down. Come. At the end of preparation for service, we push tables together and eat a meal as a family. This is called our briefing time. Briefing and breathing. Restaurants all over the world stop before service, even if there is always something more pressing to do. Everyone who works in the restaurant comes together to break bread. Even if it's only for 20 minutes, it is essential to success. That the barriers break down between those that face the customers and those that work in the background. I always see it as puzzle pieces of yarn coming together for a moment before we all separate and ensure a perfect evening for our guests. Isn't that a nice way of looking at it? A little bit. Okay. The journals, of course, everybody signs the journals. Um, please make sure your signature is in the book. Guests really love that. Um, and it's your, your pride as well. And you are all celebrities. Okay. Ultimately, if you have certain strategies and habits you have in place that you don't need or to think about constantly, like no creases in the tablecloths, dirty glasses and watermarks on the cutlery, it creates a space for you to be creative and break boundaries. Really what it comes down to is have the basics. You don't need to be surgeons, but rather so you can have the luxury of experimenting and innovating while knowing the rest is taken care of. I don't think that people just go out to have a meal. I think they expect surprise, a sense of escapism from their own kitchen. It's not just about what the food tastes like, but what it looks like, where people are sitting, where it comes from. How does the light catch a person's eye sitting across from them? And how does the person dress who is serving the food? How white? Exactly, is the tablecloth. The way the food gets to the table is equally as important as the way it gets onto the plate. No restaurant is perfect, but the ones that work as a single indivisible organism do come pretty close. Excellence does not get delivered if one part competes to be better than the other or fails to fully value the other. At Jan, we aspire to ensure excellence all around.
I see my team at Yana's Advisors guiding people to where they can spend their time in the pursuit of a good life. And it's important to spend money on time and experiences. Yan isn't just about the food, but the unique journey each guest embarks upon when they walk through the door and out into Maria. And then later back home to tell the tale. And most important, to treasure it. It is an experience that a guest will be able to relive through telling their friends and their family. When the lights goes off and the lock is turned, as the streets of Nice hum with a few footsteps around midnight, with the laughter that fills the old town bars and carries on until the early hours of the morning, the orange glow of the streetlights guides me home.